Welcome to our next Understanding Zotero video. Uh, in the previous two videos, we looked at how to install Zotero and how to configure Zotero. And now we're going to begin using the program for what it was designed for. That is, capturing sources, organizing those sources, and then using uh, those sources in the papers that we write. Now, the capturing piece of Zotero, and when I say capturing, I mean collecting. Because when you do research projects, you're going to find all different sorts of uh, resources, whether they're print resources in the library, whether they're electronic resources in databases, or whether they're just websites that you find throughout the internet. At any rate, it's a large and complicated piece of what Zotero does. And so I've divided capturing into several videos. In this first video, we're just going to look at how we capture sources in the library catalog and how we capture sources in some academic databases. So jumping right in, you can see that I already have Firefox open, and I've already maximized it so that it takes up my entire screen. You can also see that Zotero has been installed. You can see the Z right here. If I click on it, we have the half window view of Zotero. Now, the first thing that I want you to do before we begin capturing sources is I want you to go over to New Collections, and I want you to create a collection. Now, the collection name I want you to use here is use the at symbol and then put inbox. Click OK. And the reason I want you to create this collection is you will be using Zotero to do many different projects. And probably each of those projects will have its own collection. And so by the time you have finished your first or second year of courses, you'll have a dozen or maybe more folders on this side of your Zotero screen. You can see that I have a whole bunch because I've been using it for years. And what happens is, um, in order to keep things organized, it's a good idea to have one collection where you collect everything at the beginning of a project before you sort through it, decide what you want to keep, decide what you want to throw away, and file it into individual projects. And that's what I do with the inbox. And the reason that I use the at sign at the beginning of the inbox is because you can see that these collections are organized alphabetically. And the at symbol means that inbox is always going to be at the top. OK? Now, make sure the inbox is selected here. And let's go back to the library website. Now, you know from our earlier workshops that you can always search the library website by typing in your search query in the search bar on the library uh, homepage. So let's say, for the sake of an example, that I want to look at books by Jeremy Monday. What I'll do is I'll type in his name, and I'll hit Search. And that will open up a new tab in the library catalog, and I can see all of the resources that we have here that are written by Jeremy Monday. Let's take one example, Translation as Intervention. Here I have all the publishing information, the ISBN number, etc. But what I want you to notice is up here in the address bar, there's a little icon, and it looks like a book. And when you see this icon, it's Zotero telling you, hey, I can save this. Do you want me to save this? So what I want you to do is I want you to click here. All right. And you can see that the item has been brought into your Zotero library. Here is the title, creator, the date, and then all of the other information, the type of source it is, the series it belongs to, the publisher's name, the publisher location, the year it was published, all of this information is in the third panel. So that's how you would capture one individual source in the library catalog. I'm going to click the Back button on the browser. And we can see that we have uh, several resources by Jeremy Monday. And another great advantage of Zotero is that I don't actually need to click on each of these individual resources in order to capture them. Again, you can see an icon up here. It's not a book this time. It is a folder. What I can do is I can click on that folder. And everything that's on this search page will then appear here. And what I can do is I can collect or click on the items that I want to bring into my library. So I'll click the first three, and I'll hit OK. You can see that they are all brought right into my Zotero library. And each of them has all of the publishing information already incorporated into the entry. You can see that this one, I have actually collected it twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it, and I'm just going to say Move Item to Trash. Click OK. And that is how you would collect uh, individual items in the library catalog and also 
collect items uh, in large groups in the library catalog. Now, besides the library catalog, the other place that you're going to be finding a large portion of your sources is in our databases. So let me close this and let me go back to the TII website. Let's open up some databases and see how we can capture resources there. So I'm going to click on resource guides, translation studies, and this brings us to our lib guides, which we've seen in some of our workshops. I'm going to click on journals and then research databases. And let's start with, oh, let's choose JSTOR. Now for JSTOR, let's try a different entry. Let's say I want to look at translation, ah, gender and translation. So I'll search for that. And again, I get multiple resources. Here one that looks interesting, translation and gender. I'll click there. Again, here's all the information for this particular article. It tells you who published it, the name of the journal, the uh, DOI. And again, there is an icon up here in the address bar. This time it's not a folder or a book. It is a little piece of paper. And again, I'm going to click on it. And if I go down here back to my collection, there are two things that I want to show you. First of all, I have all of the information that I need for this item. And then if I click on this little triangle here, I can see that Zotero has actually also collected the PDF. So I have the PDF now on my computer and uh, I can access it anytime I want. For now, I'm just going to close that up. And I'm going to click back on my browser. And you can see here that we have multiple items and collecting multiple items from a database is just the same as collecting it from our library catalog. You click on the folder. You have a drop down menu with the many options that you uh, can choose from. Let's collect on, let's collect three of them. Hit OK. And you can see that Zotero has collected all of them into my inbox collection. And it has given me all of the PDFs as well. So again, I have everything perfectly organized. And if you look, you can see that everything has also been named so that the files are easy to recognize. I have the year, I have the author's last name, and I have a short title. So that's how you might collect sources in JSTOR. Let's try another database. I'm going to go back to resources, or I'm going to go back to journals. Let's try uh, Taylor and Francis. I'll close JSTOR. And in Taylor and Francis, let's say I want to look for translation and post-colonialism, another good topic. I'll hit search. Post-colonialism and world literature. And again, if I see the little article icon here, I can click on it. And I can see that Zotero has downloaded it. And I have the PDF. And I also have a snapshot of the website. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a later video. If I want to collect multiple items, the process is the same as it was with JSTOR. I would click on the folder. And I would pick the items I want to download. Click OK. And those items are now in my library. So you can see that in just a few minutes, I've collected over half a dozen PDFs. I have all of the information that I need, all of the bibliographic information. I have three books. This is the great advantage of Zotero, is that just by looking around the internet, you're able to quickly and accurately 
collect uh, resources and capture all the bibliographic information associated with those resources.